Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm trying to close this window in Miro, and it's not working. Let's see if this is working. See here. Okay, all right. Anyway, we're going to talk today about linked list. So who's from uh, which cohort? Can you drop this in the chat? I think uh, cohort 22 just finished one project on linked list. Uh, so I figured this would be like a good way to uh, to start, uh, you know, this stream to talk about this. And, um, you know, basically like review like the basics and maybe do some uh, exercises together. Um, so that uh, everybody uh, is becoming a professional linked list programmer. Oh, we got like people from all over the place. 17, 15, 21, 18, 22, 20, quad six. Emmanuel, quad six. Wow. That's uh, quad 10. It's been a long time, Nathan. Yes. You finished, right? What are you doing these days? Okay, see 22, 21, 17, 19, 13, 22. Okay. All right. Um, so let's start from uh, maybe the beginning. What's a linked list? So basically a linked list. I have a new track, but so I'm going to hope this is going to work. Um, basically, like it's a structure. Up and good. It's a structure where you put like whatever you want. Could be like an integer. Could be a you know a string. Could be uh, another structure. Could be a pointer to something. Whatever it is, and then like inside this uh, structure, there is a pointer that points to another structure of the same type with exactly the same fields, but also have a pointer to another one, and so on and so forth until the last node, which usually points to null. Okay. So in order to know where the list come, uh, starts, you need like another pointer somewhere in your program. And this is a pointer that's going to point to the first node of your linked list. And that's really all it is. Very straightforward, right? Any question about this? No question? Mm -hmm. No question. Samuel says no. All right. Okay, cool. Um, so what is this uh, structure? So usually it's a structure. And in C, it's going to be a struct. And you're going to have, you know, whatever you need inside. Could be an int, again, could be a pointer to a char, could be anything else. And then you're going to have a pointer to the same struct, but points to the next one. So, you know, maybe uh, uh, I think we have an example on the internet of, um, of one of those uh, structure. So... Let's go on Putty. It's been a long time since I have not coded this. So let's do main.c, maybe like string.h, linkedlist.h, and we're going to use this structure all the time if that works for everybody. And so on the internet, we have something like type def, uh, what is it, struct list underscore s. And here we have like a char star, str, and then we have an unsigned int len and a struct list underscore s. So this is the same structure, right? Struct list, it's the same structure, and it's a pointer to uh, a node of the same type. Next. And here, Well, it's list uh, underscore t and you can't have like list underscore t here 
because it's not defined yet with the type def. That's why. But then you can use a list underscore t as a new type thanks to the type def. Or you can use struct list uh, at, you know as well, but it's like shorter um, to use this. So then we're going to use this uh, header um, to create our list. So let's do like one thing. Let's see. Include. H, and then we can use this uh, this new type here. Okay, so uh, maybe we're gonna create a structure. So first thing we could do is to play with list. Um, anything here? We need like a pointer that points to the first element. So we could do like first for head. Just f h for head. And then like the, the you know, since the list is empty, it's probably gonna be null to start with. Okay, and then we want to add a node to the list to h. So in order to add a node to H, uh, we're going to need to modify this variable. So we need to pass the address of it. Make sense? So for it add node, we want to create our leak list. OK, so here we have uh, the list underscore T. We have the pointer to the pointer, okay? So that we can modify it, otherwise we cannot modify it. And then we're gonna have to create a new structure. Um, did you guys uh, seen uh, malloc already? I don't remember. Have you seen malloc already? Yes, Simon, I'm doing Emacs. Of course I'm doing Emacs. Uh, Elias, so I'm calling, you know, a node. What I'm calling a node is, you know, like the, one of the structure that has been allocated for uh, the linked list. So it's uh, one structure that points to another structure that points to another structure. That's what, you know, a list is. And so like which, each of these uh, elements, we call the node. You could call it element if you prefer, but I usually call it node. You forgot, Bob, you forgot Emacs after finishing the project. Uh, that's not cool. That hurts. I don't understand, like, why you guys, like, choose VI, you know, like, uh, by default. Like, because, like, you see VI, you see Emacs, and everybody goes to VI. I don't understand. But, like, you know, it doesn't really matter. You know, you know, I'm making a lot of jokes, and I'm saying, like, Emacs the best. Like, you know, honestly, it doesn't matter. Just use, like, the editor you prefer. But like really like I don't understand why. As I'm serious. Like I don't understand why so many of you are using VI. So let me check. Um uh, anyone did answer for Maloc? Have you seen guys? Have you guys seen Maloc already? Yeah, I think you've seen Malloc, right? Can someone answer me? C22, have you seen Malloc? <laughs> okay, yes, you have in C22. Great, okay. So to add a node, we're going to have to allocate it, right? So we're going to need to have a new list D. List T U and it's going to have to be a pointer because we're going to ask malloc to allocate the size of new. Right? Size of new list T. All this. And so malloc is gonna allocate enough space for us. 
um, to uh, to create the list t. And then we need to in list t uh, in new. Uh, we have a len, we have a string. Okay, so probably we can say we want. Uh, I don't know. What do we want to create a list link of names? Let's do this. So str equals for now we're just gonna put this and then we, we can modify it uh, later. Okay. And then new land. I guess this is like the string length of str. Right, I guess. So maybe for now, we're gonna just put something fixed so that this is six, and then we can create the function together again later. So now we have like our node, what we just did with uh, this code is, let me switch to the browser, right here. So with this, what we did is, so we had like uh, a pointer to a pointer that points to null. Okay, so this is h. So this is like the one from main. Okay, and this is uh, h from add no, it's terrible. <laughs> it's very hard to uh, write with the mouse. Okay. Um, then with malloc, with like this code, what we've done is create one of those nodes with str len and another pointer. Okay, and then we have like the variable new that points to it. Now what we want is head to point to it. And this one to point to the, the previous next one. So right now there's nothing, right, in H. So probably now like this points to null, which is the value of H. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this value, uh, put it here. So that this points to the first node of the of the linked list. Right now it's null, so it's going to point to null for the first one. And then we're going to take this value and replace it with the value of new. So that now h will point to this. Okay. So this is what we're going to do now. So let's go back to the terminal. So we said new next, right? And again, like, oh, yes, this is next here. Okay. New next equals h. Okay. And h equals new. Okay. So going back here. What we've done. So new next equals h. So this. Oops. Oh la la, what is this? This equals the value of h. So since the value of h is null, now this is null. So it points to null. And then we do h, this one. This is h. Uh, equals new. So instead of equaling null, now it equals the uh, address of this node. Okay, any question here? Uh, len is a variable that determines a number, a number of character of the string. Yes. 
that's what it is right now it's fixed uh we can and then we we're gonna make it like a little bit better after but right now i want to focus on the the technicity of adding a node so we're not going to get into like those details doesn't matter right now i want you to understand how you add a node and how everything works in the linked list then we can do this together you're not going to malloc the string so again we're going to malloc the string next but this is um uh this is a string in double quotes so that means that it has a value, which is the address of the first character of the string, but this one is going to be incorporated in the program. So this is never gonna change. So I, like this is a pointer, so it needs an address, and this is uh, an address too. So I don't need to do it. But then I can't, mod if, I, if I do this, then I can't modify uh, str, like what, point, what is pointed by str. But we'll do we'll do like the the duplicate of the string and the malloc a little bit later. Again, I want to like understand the how to add a node. Ilias, I just did a, how to add a node. Do you have any specific question on how to add a node? I just I just did it. Maybe we can go through that again. Let's go through that again on the whiteboard. Um, let me move this here. Okay. Okay, so I have this code, right? And now I'm going to try to draw Drop the tablet. This is going to work. Okay. So initially I have H. That points to null from main. Okay. So far, so good. So h is zero. And so that's that's from main. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From this here, we have like this equals null. Because the list right now, the list is empty. So the header points to nothing. Okay. Then here I allocate memory for one node. So somewhere in memory, I have a node with str, int, and next. And next being a pointer. Those values, we don't know what they are because we just allocate them. So we need to initialize them. And then I point the address of this. I store the address of that into a variable called new. I can do that because new is a pointer of type uh, list t, and we just allocated that. Okay. Then I say, okay, str now points to somewhere in memory where it's called, it's written Julian. And then this is now six, str, uh, len. Okay. Again, this is fixed for now, and we're gonna do it uh, dynamically together after. I just want to understand, or you to understand like how the link list work. So like we focus on the detail later. But then with this, what we do is that we're saying, okay, now h, now next, sorry, is gonna point to whatever the value of h. So this node is now pointing, this uh, node next is now pointing to null. And now we want the header to point to the first node, so the new node. That's what we're doing here. We're saying, okay, the value of new, you're gonna put it in the in uh, h. So now h is the value of new, which is the memory address of this node. So now h points to to this and no longer points to null. Okay, and then we have added one node so now we have one node okay so now we all have going back to uh, main we have h that points to this new node and this one points to null okay now let's do it again like we call it again add node we're gonna have another time we're gonna allocate so we have like a new node here this is the new one 
So we have new pointing to the new node. Okay. Then you have, okay, Julian. And then you have six. And then what we do is like new next. This is going to point to the previous value of H. So it now like this one points to this one. And now H is going to point to new. So now like this one no longer exists, this link, but now it's going to point here. And so the result is that we have H pointing to the new new one that points to the old new one that points to null. Okay, and so every time now we're going to add a node, it's going to come here. This one points here, this one points here, and we remove that, and so on and so forth. Any question? You don't have to check that the list uh, is empty because this is still working even if the list is empty. The first time we uh, we add the node, we have H pointing to null. Okay, then we have this. This takes the old value of H, which is null, and then H takes the new val uh, value of the new uh, the new node. So you don't you don't need to check if the list is null or not. uh can you guys hear me well like i have uh someone who says my mic is not working uh well enough i think i'm the the max possible for my mic and it seems like on my end it seems like it's work it's work well orange no it's not the same so the question is is this the same as and it's not the same because these two values are different somewhere in memory let me uh, delete everything again Somewhere in memory, you have the variable new. You have the variable new, which has a value. Okay. And then it's also stored at a specific address. This is going to take, is going to put the address of new, so this, into H. And this is going to take the value of new. So this into H. So these are like two different things. Okay. Will you adjust pointers to add new nodes? Uh, hi, Ren, I, I'm not sure I understand the question. We always adjust H, the header. The header like needs to start to the new node. So you, if you add the node at the beginning, which we just did, then yes, you have to adjust it. That's what we did when we do h equals new. Because new was pointing to the new node allocated by malloc. So then you say, okay, like this is no longer pointing here. This is pointing here. But you do this, bef but this before you do that, you need to make sure that it points back here. Okay, somebody's saying like, I finally understand, this is good. This list is a singly linked list, yes. This one is a singly linked list. It goes like only one way. There are like different types of linked lists. The, the most common one is a linked list. So it's like only one pointer. You have doubly linked lists. Like they, have, they hold like two pointers. There's like the, the next, that points to the next one, but also the previous one. So you have like a little bit of uh, different things to do here. H is double pointer and it should carry address. Yes, H is a pointer to a pointer. So if you want to change the pointer, you need to have its address to be able to change its value. Otherwise, 
it's going to be copied into the function. And once you leave the function, it's not going to be updated to the calling from the calling function. So as long as you have one star, it is a pointer. It is a pointer to whatever uh, is the rest. So if it's like an int, it could be like, it doesn't matter like the number of uh, stars, it's still a pointer to whatever is before type. Yeah, the session is recorded uh, now I fell. Okay, makes sense? Should we try to run this code and see uh, how it goes? Or well, maybe uh, to understand like if it works, uh, we need to print it. So what's going to be the algorithm to print that? So let's see. So imagine we have like a linked list of like, I don't know, three elements. So what we know is that it's going to end by null, you know, because that's how we built our linked list. Uh, so we have H. So we're going to walk through each of the nodes until we hit null. Then we stop. And for each of the nodes, we're going to print everything that we want to print. Okay? So sounds like a loop. What? While we don't hit, while it's not null, it's not the null pointer, then we print the content. Okay? And the content is like, in this case, it's a char star, so it's a string, and it is a integer, unsigned integer. So it's a number, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna add like three nodes. They're all gonna be the same, uh, because like right now the code is not dynamic in like for that part. It's just like Julian and six. We're gonna add like three, and then we're gonna print the linked list. Okay, so we need to pass H. This is the address of the first element. And then it doesn't return anything. Print. And then here we need a list T star H. And then basically, while H is not null, okay, what do we do? Oh, what is it? it's not aligning the lines. Okay, it's not. Uh, then we're going to print. So we're going to use printf in this case. Um, name equals, so percentage s, and size equals percentage. Was it inside is view? I don't remember. And then, so it's going to be H str, and then H, was it N? Okay. And what we do after that, we move H to next. Okay. So about this, Let's go back to the whiteboard to make sure everybody understands. So I have H that points here. Remember, it's uh it's sent to another function, so it's copied. So it doesn't matter if it like we're never gonna if we go back to a main, it's not gonna be changed, right? Um so we have H here, so we print it. Okay, we print uh str and len, and then we say okay, H now equals h next this is h next this is the value of the memory uh, address of the next node so now h when we do h equals h next oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then like you point this one no longer points to the first one but to the second one then we print because it's not null then again h equals h next it's here it's not null so we print and then we do h equal h next, and so now it's null, so it gets out of the, the while loop. Make sense? Any question here? Uh, 
Uh, we should, uh, I don't make uh, sessions in French, but you know, maybe one day. Yes, I can say C is the best. I agree with you. Okay, so normally with this, we should print everything if I haven't forgotten anything. Uh, like the only thing I might have forgotten is like this is not defined. So, what is it? Where is it defined? Do you know? Where is null defined? STD, I think it's STDIO. We're going to need it for uh, for printf. It should have the definition of null, I think. Let's see. Okay. Let's see if it works. Uh -huh. Implicit declaration of function malloc. Okay. Man malloc. STDlib. Okay. What else? Unexpected. Okay, I forgot. Semicolon. You guys didn't tell me? Okay, all right. What else? All right, okay. Does it work? Ta da! It works. Any question? Okay, so Desmond, you're asking like if the function is going to be reusable or if you're going to have to create another function. And I'm not sure I understand the question. So here, like we're using the same function all the time. And this one, it's looping through the entire linked list. So only one call to the function is going to print everything. Make sense? Uh, repeat this loop. Uh, Martin, yeah, I can repeat this loop. So let's go through that again. Let's go back to the whiteboard to make sure everybody gets it. Okay. It. So we have this code here to print the list, okay? So let's imagine I have H that points to the first node. Here is next in, in my node, right? And next is the value of the memory address of the next node. Okay, in this case, we have like three different nodes all containing the same thing. But again, the idea here is to focus on how a linked list, work, a linked list works. And then we're gonna you know, modify this next. So first, what we, what we know is that uh, the linked list, our linked list, in our case, we know that it finishes with the last node pointing to null, okay? So we can say, so the idea is that we're gonna walk H through each of the nodes until we hit null, and then we stop. So we know that, so this is basically what it is here. As long as it's not null anymore, then we're gonna walk through it. The way we walk through it is by what we have done, once we have done what we want, we're gonna move H to the next node. So right now, like H points to the first node because it, H is the value of the memory address of the first node. Once we print everything inside this node, then, we remove this and we say h equals h next. h points to here, so h next points to here. So now h points here. We print again the content and then we're gonna do h equals h next again. h next in this case points here, so now like h points here. It is still not null, right? So we print it and then we point, we'd say, okay, h equals h next again. In this case, h next points to null. Now, when we check again uh, inside the while uh, loop, h is null. h contains the value of null, so h is null. So then we get out of the loop and then we finish printing. So we have printed each of the nodes. Okay? Why are you not using flags? I'm not sure what you have in mind. What do you call flags and why would I use them?
Okay. So let's go back to our terminal. If uh, there's no more question about this, and then what we're going to focus on now is we're going to have to modify our node function, add node function, to specify what string I want to add. Okay. So instead of having Julian all the time, now I can say, okay, the first one maybe is Julian. But maybe I want something else for the hours. Okay. So maybe here I want uh, lemon 13. And here maybe I want uh, maybe Yusuf. Okay. So what do I have to change here? This and this, right? So this, I need to do str duplicate. I need to duplicate the string. And here, I need to do str len. str len of uh, new str, OK? And we're going to have to like create those functions. So I'm just going to do that. It's going to be like a cool exercise. So. I'm going to create like this function now. OK, what does it uh, um, return? A pointer to a char, right? And what does it take as a parameter? A pointer to a char that we need to duplicate. Pointer to a string that we need to duplicate. OK, so here, uh, in order to know all, how much uh, space we need, we're going to need to create actually the, the length function. So int size. Size equals str len str. Okay. Once we have the size of the string, then we can allocate that amount plus one because we know that we need like each uh, for each uh, of the character we need one byte, but we also need like a byte to say this is the end of the string, which is the null byte. Okay. So here. Um, new we need to allocate the space so new equals malloc of size of char times size plus one makes sense and then we just return new so what we need now is the length. Your len. It takes as a parameter. It takes char. Str. Okay. And then the way to do this is we're gonna go through each of the character until we hit zero, right? I'm going like a little bit faster because I think normally at your level you should be able to understand that. But if you have any question. I'm happy to like go to the whiteboard and um, and explain that uh, a little bit more in depth. Okay, so we have like int len, and then probably len starts at zero, and then okay. is different from the character zero, then going to do len plus plus. And then I move ST1 by one. And then I return. Okay. And with that, we should have everything we need. So let's see if it works. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Why? So let me check. So we have here. Strings. We have here Mr. Duff. Okay, the, the length. Okay, and then here. Oh, yeah, here we malloc, but we haven't copied anything. So now we need to copy it. So maybe we do str copy. That's another function. And we're going to copy str into new or maybe into str doesn't matter 
Okay, so it doesn't return anything. We're going to copy the string. Um, so much more two. And charm. So then it's I'm going to go through int i. We're going to need like uh, this but for i equals zero. And as long as from is different from zero, then you're going to move into the string. And then what you do is i equals from of i. Okay. And then at the end, you hit the zero. So you still have to say to of i equals zero. Okay. And so with that, it should work. Let's see. Pointer and zero character constant. Oh, yes, it's not from, it's linked from i. The current character we're looking at. Again, I'm going like a little bit faster, but like if you have any question, I'm happy to uh, to go uh, into details. Okay, so and with that, you know everything works. Let me see if you have a question. Lupamo, yes, it's Emacs. Uh, okay, so let's see. Let's go back to the flag question. Flags. Oh, the flags. Oh, I understand. Like for compilation. Oh, yeah, we can use the flags. Yeah, no problem. It's just like to go faster. I'm not using them, but we can do like that if you want to, to make sure that which one do you want to use? W. Okay. So, like the flags are here to help you uh, make sure that your code is, uh, is, is you know, doesn't have any uh, error, but like, it's a good idea to use the flags. So thanks, thanks for reminding me, uh, Samuel. Okay, checker. Oh, you want uh, sessions in French too? Okay, we can we can do that one day, no problem. So which code editor am, am I using? Man, Emacs of course, only Emacs. Uh, okay. Still function. Okay. Function prototypes are missing in the header file. Oh, okay. So that's a good question. So I don't have the. I don't have the. I don't have the. Uh, sorry, the prototypes in the header file. I don't need them. It, you know, actually it's good to put them, but I don't need them, why? Why? Because the comp the compiler goes like from the top to bottom. And so as long as he knows the prototype of the function, while he hits the call to that function, it works. Okay, so here, if I go through that code, I have like my, um, I have my header here. My header contains only stdio, stdlib, and also like this, uh, sorry, this definition of structure of a new tenant. So here I have this, I don't call anything, so I'm good. But now I am the compiler, now I know what strlen is. So here, now I know what strcopy is. So when I hit this one, I know strlen because I've seen it before. And I know strcpy because I've seen it before. When I go to add node, I need to know malloc. It's inside the header. I need to do strdop. I know it because I've seen it before. I need to know strlen. I know it because I've seen it before, and so on and so forth. So in that case, that's why you don't have any warnings here, because you know them. The compiler knows them because it's seen it before. Okay? But it's a good, it's a, you know, it's it's a good habit to put everything into the header file, just in case. But in this, in this situation, uh, that's why you don't have any warnings and it still works. Good question. Uh, just running. Uh, yeah, so 
Olu, yeah, I, I love to redesign built-in functions because like I you know I think it's good for you to uh, go through like those like uh, simple exercises to understand how you know everything works. So most of the time, and like if you've been with us like for like you know one month or more, you know that uh, when we teach C, you're not allowed to use the uh, the standard library except for like specific functions like malloc because you can't redesign them right now. But like everything which is like string manipulation, you're gonna have to do it yourself, and you're not allowed to use the standard library. Okay. Going through the questions. Vim is better. No, Vim is not better. Emacs is the best. Um, special session for Emacs. <laughs> Just use it, man. Like you're gonna see like a lot of cool stuff. Okay, so I think no more question about this, right? Oh, you want to repeat the for loop? Okay, no problem. So the for loop is about which one? The strcpy, right? Okay, let's let's go to the whiteboard. So we have this code, okay? And then what we've done before is that we have, before we, we call uh, strcpy, we know that we have reserved enough space in memory somewhere that is pointed by two to store the string. Uh, so let's just say it's like uh, uh, Joe. Okay, so let's say like from points to Joe. Okay, you know that at the end it's backslash zero, right? So we have like reserved like space for four characters. Okay, <laughs> okay, so. Now we have i equals zero. So from i, so as long as from i, so from plus i is not equal to zero, then we're gonna continue copying, okay? So when when we hit the for loop first, we say, okay, i equals zero, and then we test. Is from plus zero, zero? No, it's like j, okay? So we go into the loop, then we say from plus i equals uh, two plus, uh, two i equals from i. So whatever is at the address from plus i, so j is gonna go into two plus i at the address two plus i. So j now is here. Now we end the loop i plus plus. So now i equals one. Okay. So now we say okay is from plus i whatever is pointed by from plus i from plus one. Okay, the address from points to the first element of um, the string. The second element is this one. It's like from plus i, from plus one, sorry. So this is uh, O, it's not. So then it's going to go to two plus one. So O is here. And then we do i plus plus, i equals two. So from plus two points now to e. It's not zero, so we're gonna copy it at the address two plus i, and we have e here. Okay, so now i plus plus i equals three. So now from plus i at the address from plus i, you have the null character. So when you test here, this is no longer true. So we could get out of the loop, and now you know that you got you got it out of the loop because of that. So you copy also. You put like the backslash zero at two plus i, two points to here, plus one, plus two, plus three, backslash zero. And then you finished. I mean, you're done, sorry. Make sense? Let's see if you have questions. What is lemon 13? Haha. -ha. Repeat for loop, please. Okay, we're good. But why, why we need it here? Why we need strdup exactly? Okay, so it's a good question. What do we need strdup? What can't we just do here? Why can't we just do? Uh, we could potentially do this. 
And this is also going to work. But, but there's a but. Let me show you that it works. This also works. But the problem is because here, this is a string literal. It cannot be modified. And that means that if I want to change, you know, like a character in my string inside the node, then I can't do it because then it's going to seg fault. Let me show you. Let me show you. Uh, what do you see? Yeah. H str of. So here I'm going to try to uh, change this to right now it's uh, right now if it's Yusuf. I'm going to try to do it. Uh, I'm going to try to change it to uh, Busuf. Sorry, Yusuf. So if I try to do this now, my my uh, program is going to crash because this points to a, to this same string, which is a string literal. You cannot change it. You cannot alter it. You don't have the permission to do that. Okay. So if I do this, then now it's going to crash. You ready for a sick fault? Boom. Okay. If I do. If I duplicate it, now this is my string. I can do whatever I want with it because I malloced the space. It's in a segment where I can do whatever I want with it. It's mine. I can do whatever I want with it. Now, yeah, Yusuf can become Yusuf. Sorry, Yusuf. You're going to become Yusuf. Now, if I print the string again, just to make sure you can see that. You're going to see that my first element is now Pusuf. I was able to change the content of the memory. That's the big difference between a string literal and the one that you have allocated yourself. You can do whatever you want with something you have malloced, as long as you don't, you know, get out of the space. Make sense? Yusuf is not here anymore. He doesn't say anything anymore. <laughs> Yusuf is gone. Is Busuf back? Uh, why do we use the null byte terminator as the condition? Uh, here, because here we know that a string in C ends with the null byte. So that's why we do this. We could, like, if we do this, it's also going to work. Maybe that's your question. Maybe you used to do that. Because at the end, uh, the null byte is as the value 0. So it's the same thing. But since we are in the context of manipulating character, I like to use uh, a character. But you're right. You can use 0. Here, the null byte is uh, his value. Its value is 0. So you can do like whatever you want, but I like to keep the context clear. What if char from is null? Uh, what is, oh, what if uh, from is null here, then it's going to crash. But it's not my problem. It's the responsibility of, devel of the developer to call my function only if it is not null. But if it's null, it's going to crash because then you're going to try to access null plus zero, and you're not allowed to do this. And we can like, we can try. If I put null somewhere, it's going to crash. Boom. Okay. What is the difference between copy and duplicate? Oh, it's a good question. So
Okay, is it still working now? Is it working? It's not working, is it? Hello, hello. Okay, so I think it's working, but I'm back, but my camera is not working anymore. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I guess you can hear me. Okay. Oh, Yusuf is back. <laughs> okay, sorry, I I uh, my uh I didn't have any battery anymore, any power. I just like plugged it in again. It seems that I'm back. Uh, just my camera has uh, frozen. I guess it's okay. I don't know if I can do something about it. I can do something about it. I can't do anything about it. But it doesn't matter. You can hear me, right? Yeah, video is not working, but it doesn't matter. Okay. So the difference between uh, uh, copy and duplicate. That's a good question. The Here. Duplicate implies that you want to reserve the space for the new string in memory. So that's what we do here. We malloc it. And then you copy it. If you go like str copy right away, then you have, it means that you have like a space already when you can put the new string, the copied string into. Um, and that's why you need to use like, if you don't have the space, then you're going to use like a duplicate. And if you already have the space, then you're going to use copy. So duplicate is also, is essentially you reserve the space and then you copy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, any question? Any additional question here? Should we do like another uh, another function or something? Uh maybe we can do a uh, counting. When will I do this for binary trees? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let's focus on the notes for now. Okay, let's do uh, counting the number of the elements. So, int the linked list len. And then it's head so how are we going to do this let's go to the whiteboard Up. did it so we have here we have h that points to a node that points to another node that points to another node that points to another node and we know that at the end it points to null okay and so it's not exactly the node that points, like it's the element next that holds the value to the next node. Once next is null, it means that this is the last element of our list. This is the way we built our list. Okay. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna have we're gonna have like a while loop again. And maybe like while if something is not null, it probably h, because we're gonna walk h through all of the list until we hit the last one. 
every time we have a new node, then we do we have a counter, and we do C plus plus something like this, right? Makes sense. Let's go. So hop. So we have like int count, and at the beginning count equals zero, and then while our while loop. And while basically h is not null, then it means that we have one more element. So we can do count plus plus. Can't do c plus plus because I don't do c plus plus. Uh, and then we walk h to the next one. h equals same way that we did before. h equals h next. Make sense? Since h points to the node, a node has a next element that is the address of the next node, right? So if you use this value and put it to h, then you walk through uh, the linked list with h. And then you just return count. Let's see if this works. As list equals, and this is what did how did we call it? LLN. LLN of H. Okay. Let's see if this works. Okay. So the size of the list is three, which is the case, right? Any question about this one? How to print the link list in reverse? Ooh, yeah, yeah. Without like a link to the previous one? How to do this? Maybe we uh, with recursion? Print reverse. Do this. Can we do this? So let's see. Let's go to the white bomb. So uh, let me see if we have questions before. Nice in the list. Okay. Difference between arrow and dots. What's the difference between an arrow and a dot? Okay. That's a good question. Let me do this before. So let's go back to the white bomb. Okay. So you have a, that's true, you have like different uh, different things. So when uh, you have a struct, uh, you know, whatever T element, the element is the struct, okay? And you have uh, lots of items, let's say one of which is an int n. Then when you do this, then um, the program is reserving space for this. It always reserves space for that, for the for the type of the um, of the variable. In this case, it is the struct itself. So it there is space in memory for it, and then lm is this. The value of lm is that. Okay. So you want to access n. You can do lm dot Ah, n. Okay, and then you have access to the elements. Now, if you have like struct uh, t a pointer p that points to an lm, and then you say okay p equals in this case the address of lm, the address of lm. Okay, so p is a pointer. It's just p is just a memory address. And this memory address is the memory address of this element. Okay. Now, in order to access this, you need to, as the same the same way you would do for an integer, for instance, you need to dereference it. I dereference p 
And now this is the same as elements. And I can do this dot n. And this is the same as this in this case. Okay? In order not to have to write all of this, then this is the equivalent in a more readable fashion. You can vo use those interchangeably. It doesn't matter. These are the same. You dereference a pointer, and then you get the element of the structure, or you do this right away. These are the same thing. This is just like a nicer way to write this. Make sense? Kav Mutana, Mutama, does it, does it make sense to you? Okay, I guess so. The question? Everybody knew this? Did you guys know that? Knew that? Okay. So now, is it possible if you have a linked list, a singly linked list, is it possible to print it in reverse? Knowing that you only have the pointer to the next element. You only have this. And you don't know, of course, how many elements you have, right? Is it possible to print it in reverse? Who says yes? Who says no? Okay, Gad. So what's the code? Okay. So let's imagine something. So the way we do it, like for the normal way of uh, traversing the list, you traverse the list, yeah? So you have H pointing here, then you print, then you print here, then you print, then you point here, then you print, then you point here, and you, and you print. Instead of doing this, what we could do is like walk through it, and then if it's not the last one, then instead of print, printing this first, you print the rest first and then you print this. Okay? So let's do an example with, uh, I don't know, three notes. Three notes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh. Okay. So you're here, so you have H, okay? One, two, three, and then zero, okay? So if I have a function that prints reverse a list, and then like if I print reverse the next node, and then I print, uh, I print uh, this node, then what's gonna happen? I have my function print reverse. So this is not null. So I have one, but I want to print first, print reverse starting from two. Before I print one. And then like this is not, this is not uh, null. So I print reverse the next one. This is not null. So I print reverse the next one. The next one is zero. So I don't print it, and then I go back here, and then I print three. I finish, then I go back here, I print two, I finish, I go back here, I print one, and then this is the this is the end. And then I go back to the calling function. Okay, so how do you translate that into code? So what, what we said is that we're going to, if, H is not null, so this is not the end. If H is not null, what I want to do is before I print, uh, where is the print stuff? Okay.
before I print uh, my values, I want to print reverse the rest of the list before I print myself. So what I do is that I print the next node first, and then I print myself. Okay? And then I think that's it. Let me think. Next. If it's now when I get out. Yeah, I think that should work. Let's see. All right, so here, instead of having Busuf Lemon 13 and Julian, I have Julian Lemon 13 and Busuf. Any question? Why not try recursion? This is recursion. Yes, it is recursion, right? Here, I'm having a function that calls itself. And then it piles up. And then like at the end, it depiles it so that it goes like the other way. What does it mean to traverse a list? It means that you go through uh, the list, each element, uh, one element at a time. The first one, but the second one, but the third one, etc. Oh, Abel, you could do that by storing everything into an array, but you would have to like malloc and realloc all the time because you have no idea how big is the list. You could do it this way, but look here, I don't need to malloc anything. And you know, it's just like a few lines of code. How to transfer a linked list into an array? Uh, do we have the time to do this? Okay, we can do this. Um, I just want to make sure that nobody has questions about this one. Everybody's good. Yeah, like if you have a doubly linked list, uh, Pascal, you can you could do it. Uh, you just go like through the end at the end, and then you go uh, you go back. But uh, when uh, not at a time, you could do that too. But this is a single linked list, so we can't do it in this uh, situation. Okay, so we can do a link list to array if you want to. And then we call it a day, okay? So link uh, list to array, a link list to array. Uh, so we need a list. So here we need several things. The first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need to reserve the space for the list. Right, so we need to know how many elements we have in the array. So in order to do this, we're going to need a function that we already have done, which is LLN. Okay, so in size space equals LLN the list. So this is going to count the number of elements in my list. Now I need to reserve the space. So how many, how much space do I need? So it's an array. So it's going to be an array of, sorry, where is it? List T of, okay, I'm going to call it A. And so A, I'm going to map up the space I need. What do I need? I need size of one element is of size of list T. Okay. And I need how many elements size? I just counted them. Okay. So now I have the space and it's in A. So I'm going to need an int I. I'm going to start at zero and basically for I equals zero until I is less than size. I plus plus. I'm going to move through my list and copy everything into my array. Okay. So here, I could also use H different, different from null because every time I'm going to do this, I'm going to do H and H equals H next. I'm going to do both. Okay. 
So the idea is that I'm going to walk through each element of my list. And for each element, I'm going to copy it into, um, into the array. And every time at the next position. Okay, so basically, I'm going to... Um, A of I equals A of I equals H. Can I do this? I copy, this is the elements, so it should work. Yeah, and that's it. And then, so let's see. I'm going to do, and then I'm going to have to return the array. So this is going to be a list, it's going to be a pointer to the first element of the array. So A, A equals list to array. Of H. See if this works. Oh, to, in order to know if it works, we're going to print it. So print array. Oh, we're going to need the size also. How do we know this is the end of our? Uh, how do we know it's this? We're going to store it somewhere. Oh, we need to have like a null pointer at the end. So maybe we do this size plus one, and then at the end we have the null pointer. Or like or something that is zero. Oh no, we know. We don't know. Uh, we don't need it because why do we not need it? Because we have like one way to know it's the last one. It's because the the next pointer is going to be null for the last um, for the last element of the array, right? Does it make sense? So, Anna, and then print. Okay, Let's see if it works. Let's see up. So, int i, we go through all the elements, e equals zero, while a of i dot next is not null. And then I press press. And then we're going to print, print stuff here. Here, so instead of this, now it's A of I dot str. A. Right, Judy? So here I'm going to be able to print all the elements, but I still need uh, the last one. So this is going to be uh, exiting my uh, for loop once we hit the element which has next as null. But this is still an element, so I still want to print it. So I still need to do it one more time at the end of my loop. And this should work, I think. Okay, non void function C94. Okay, it's gonna work on us. Uh, so, yeah, this is my array. Maybe let's put a uh, Okay, so this is my list. Then this is my list, but like Yusuf becoming Busuf. 
size of the list. This is the reverse list. And this is my array that I copied. Any question? Uh, oh, boo, you did not understand the reverse. Wait, we're gonna go over it. So just let's finish this first. Like anybody had any question about uh about list two array? It's pretty straightforward, right? No question? Is it still working? You guys with me? Okay, all right. So if we don't have any question, we can go over the the print uh, list in reverse for uh, Ogbu. So Ogbu, this is what we have. Let's go to the whiteboard. And come on, let's do it again. Text. Okay, so this is uh, what we do have as the code, okay? So the idea is, again, we have H that points to a node, that points to another node, that points to another node, that points to the uh, node pointer. So this is node 1, node 2, node 3, okay? If we walk like we did before through all the nodes, one by one and we print them, then we print them in order. We do not have a, a doubly linked list with like pointers pointed to the previous one. So you cannot walk through uh, number three and then like use the pointer that goes back because we don't have it. So once you're in node two, you have no idea how to get back to one, node one. Okay. So the idea is I want to print this one after I print all of these. I want to print this one after I print all of the others. And so I want to print this one, then this one, then this one. But you can all only walk through this uh, list that way. So the idea is if you uh, print everything else before the, the current node, then you can do it in reverse. So here I point to one, right? So H points to one and then Instead of printing one right away, I print the rest of the list and then I print my, myself one. So instead of doing one, I'm going to print this. So now I have like, I print reverse one, but I don't print one. Before that, I print reverse starting at two. When I'm at two, since it's not null, before I print two, I want to print reverse three. So print reverse two is going to call print reverse three here before printing itself. Print reverse three is going to print reverse null before printing itself. Since like we hit this condition, then we go back in the stack. So I have like print reverse number three. I'm done. So now I can print reverse myself. So I print three. So number three is printed. Now I'm done with my function. I get out. So I, I'm going back to the function that called me. I was here with uh, node number two. So this is done. So now I'm going here. So now I'm doing print two. I'm done with my function. So I'm go back to the stack. The function that called me was print reverse one. It called me here. Now this is done because I'm going back to the stack. So now I'm print myself. Print myself is print one. And this was the first call to the print reverse function. So now I'm getting out and I'm going back to main. So I'm, I have printed three, then two, then one. Make sense? Yes, this is recorded. Yeah, it was like, you know, recursion is a little bit uh, tricky at the beginning, uh, but it's, you know, it's gymnastic. You have to like go to the whiteboard, try to understand, go step by step, 
Um, and then like, you know, like the more you're going to do, like the easiest is going to come. Any additional question? Clear? Okay. So guys, it's been an hour and a half. It was really cool to uh, to talk to you all. And, uh, you know, remember, always use Emacs.